quickly characterized by industrialization and globalization swept the world, the traditional boot hoof lost practical prominence, and the modern shoe became the predominant footwear people were concerned with. There are three main movements we find amongst Sunnis in our contemporary time. Dr. Jonathan Brown calls them the modernist Salafists, the traditionalist Salafists, and the late Sunni traditionalists. One of the distinguishing features of Salafists modernists is that they did not hold a had hadith transmissions, i.e. not mutawatir, to be theologically binding. Whoever feels comfortable with them can believe in them, but none can be forced to believe in them or be declared an unbeliever for rejecting them. Thus, the son of Islam and relying on hadiths as their primary source for interpreting the religion. Of their mainstays is using the ahad hadith transmissions for both theology and law and emphasizing a renewed spirit of ijtihad. When it comes to wiping over the khuf, traditionalist Salafists and modernist Salafists are commonly known for allowing the wiping over modern cotton socks. As noted earlier, there is no indication that the Muslim scholars of pre-modernity ever allowed this, saying to the effect that wiping over the boots was a dispensation for washing the feet, as ordained in the Qur'an. Their legal reasoning was, a substitute, i.e. the khuf, cannot have another substitute, nor a dispensation, ruhsa, have another dispensation. The fashion in which the modernist and traditionalist Salafists finagled their way around this legal precept is by saying that the asl, or the original, is the hadith text, the matan, regarding the khufain, and hanbali schools, to the thin cotton sock. Late Sunni traditionalists, on the other hand, more or less maintain all the components of classical Sunni Islam. Jonathan Brown says late Sunni traditionalists subordinate hadiths to the interpretive traditions of the Sunni schools of law and Sunni legal theory. Late Sunni traditionalists affirm their total confidence in the classical method of hadith criticism. They also, however, entrust jurists, not hadith scholars, with the ultimate authority in determining the authenticity and implication of a hadith. Late Sunni traditionalism is famously known for not allowing the wiping over modern socks, but only the khufain as they were classically under referred to in the question. That's my mufti voice. <laughs> <laughs> After conducting a durability test on them by walking the necessary three sharpie miles, as well as conducting a water resistance test, and a test to ascertain whether the socks are able to stand on the legs without being fastened or tied, we are satisfied with the results and deem them fit for mesha, wiping, during wudu. Hence, it is permissible to use them as alternatives to leather socks. Dexshell Inc., who makes, the waterproof, who makes waterproof clothing for outdoor activities, became privy to the fact that Muslims started buying their products in mass and even came out with a model called Dead Shell Wulu. <laughs> Despite not allowing the wiping over thin cotton socks, late Sunni How did that subject particularly interest you? And is it part of a, a broader uh, research framework that you're working on? Can I add a different follow-up on that? If, if you could also, in an after you answer this, clarify why exactly, can you so political, I think you started to say this was a difference in Sunni Shia interpretation of those hadith, but if you could also just clarify that. Um, how did I become interested in it? I can't really say I know. <laughs> um, I heard some like traditional like Muslim like ulama, you know, try to refer to it as a tut. And you'll see many different translations of like fit text, you know. Um, they say all different kinds of things for the khuf. If you could just clarify from your presentation, you were you were explaining just how polemical it became, but I didn't actually understand the cause of the conflict. <coughs> and I thought I understood you implying this became a difference as soon as you interpretation, but perhaps I misunderstood. So it has to do with the idea that the Quran was mass transmitted by multiple people, like you can say hundreds of thousands of people in different locations, and it was impossible they all could have came together, colluded and, and made it up as a lie. That's the, the argument that's given traditionally, and that, that is called mutawata transmission, um, or you could say mass transmission. And they make the same argument regarding the full faith. They say, the Sunnis will say that the, there's so many hadiths about the, the Hufayn. Um, I mean, 
from what I counted and looked up in various collections, I found it at least over 70 different mentions of it. And it's mentioned in what are called the Sahih Sitta, the six canonical hadith collections. And every single one has got a section of the Hufayn. So it's, it's there everywhere, so to say. And so they argue that this hadith is also mass transmitted just like the Quran. So denying this hadith is the same as denying a verse in the Quran, therefore making you a disbeliever. So it's not complaining. There are people arguing against it. So was there a group of people really attacking this? 